So when they offered you the job again, did you have to think long and hard no, about it? No, the only, the only thing I was a bit concerned about was that they said, well, there's no money, but we know what you've done at Bradford and we'd like you to do the same at Rochdale. So my first job at Rochdale was to give 13 players free transfers. <laughs> and I signed Dearly 12 man. free transfer players to replace them. <laughs> That's but, quite incredible. But, well, yeah, but again, I'd, I'd like to think that we did reasonably well in that mm. period I was there because Rochdale had been perennial strugglers and we got to the fifth round of the FA Cup yeah. that second year I was there and lost to Crystal Palace 1-0 mm -hmm. and Crystal Palace went on to play in the final yeah. that year and we got Rochdale in a more respectable place in the league as well and then you leave there in 1991 then you join Hull City that was something yes. else. Yes, well again, yeah. Um, the chairman at Rochdale had always said that if anybody, because of what I'd done at Bradford and I'd got Rochdale into a healthy position, he said, you know, if a bigger club comes in for you, we won't stand in your way. Mm. So Hull came in and they were obviously a bigger club that had a big, oh, quite a big history. And I, well, I was going to jump at the chance but instead of saying, well, we said we'd let you go, they decided to make it difficult for me in Rochdale and they wouldn't let me go unless Hull paid compensation. So after protracted negotiations, Hull ended up having to pay £40,000 compensation for me. But I just wanted to manage a bigger club. Yeah. Well, little did I know that the time, <laughs> that year when I went to Hull, I mean, Hull were down at the bottom, so that's why they were looking for a new manager. But funnily enough, the manager that they had at the time was Stan Turnant, who had been my assistant. Bizarre. When, we, when we left Bradford together, he went to Chelsea and worked with Ian Porterfield at Chelsea, yeah. and then worked at Crystal Palace, and then came back to manage Hull. Oh, so I took over from Stan. <laughs> and I mean, your time there, um, it, it was just, it sort of just went downhill a bit in terms of. Yes, yeah, I mean, we, well, we, were, we were relegated to start with yeah. and the Needler family had bankrolled the club for years and years and years and unfortunately they decided at that time the chequebook is closed and again they'd seen what I'd done at Bradford and at Rochdale so I think they thought I could do the same at Hull um, and six and a half years later yeah, we. I mean, the last eighteen months was horrendous. Mm -hmm. More so for fam more so for my family rather than myself, because the supporters turned against me and the chairman. And um, because normally, if they turn against the manager, the chairman will get rid of the manager. Yeah. But the chairman at all stuck by me, so I stuck by him. So they, they turned on the pair of us basically. But throughout that time, again, because there was no money to spend. We got young players in, we signed people like Dean Windass. I think over a period of time, I think I spent about £60,000 over that six and a half year period. And we we um, avoided three winding up orders throughout that time by selling players. We sold Dean Windass, we sold Alan Fettis and we sold out Roy Carroll all had to go just to keep the club going. So I think some people realised that we did do a decent job, but the fact that we got relegated twice, you know, they'd had enough and yeah. it, it got it got nasty. Yeah, it's hard. Supporters sometimes don't know what's going on behind the scenes, do they? Well, just... the, I think the, the business people in the city can understand what we were doing yeah. because we kept the club going, but supporters want a successful team, don't they? Yeah. You mentioned there Dean Windass. What was he like to, to manage? Well, <laughs> it, He'd been playing for North Farraby, which is the village where I live, and that's yeah. where I moved to when I became manager. And we'd had him watched on two or three occasions. We knew that he'd been an apprentice in his younger days. He was turned down by York and obviously by Hull City. But we invited him in for a training session on the Monday morning. Our scout had been watching him on three or four occasions. And within 20 minutes, I said to my assistant, Jeff Lee, I said, we've got to sign this guy. Because mm. he just fitted in so well with the players that we already had there. In fact, he was three moves ahead of everybody else. 
and within two or three days we offered him a three year contract. Now, in his early days with us, he was a midfield player, yeah. but we had a situation at one time where with no strikers fit, so I ended up putting him up front and he played, played there, you know, he scored umpteen goals, he formed a great partnership with a guy called Linton Brown initially, but then again, you know, the, the checkbook meant, that, or the lack of the checkbook meant that we had to sell him and initially he was going to go to Norwich, funnily enough, yeah. where Martin O'Neill was the manager. <laughs> But for some reason, the uh, Norwich chairman, Chase, uh, told Martin O'Neill that he doesn't want him. Mm. So he ended up going to Aberdeen. And Roy Aitken was the manager at Aberdeen at the time. And I'd arranged to fly him up. He didn't have an agent at that time. And my chairman at Hull was desperate for the money. We'd agreed a fee of 650000 yeah. And my chairman was desperate for the money to keep the club going. So I rang him on the Thursday and out of the blue, he, he didn't know about it. We kept it very, very quiet. I said, we're flying up to Scotland. And he went, why? I said, well, Aberdeen have come in for you. And we're going to fly, I said, we're going to fly from Humberside up to, up to Aberdeen. And he said, do I need my passport? <laughs> So I said, no. So the chairman said, right, he said, when you get on that plane, when you come back, make sure that he's not with you. He said, we, we desperately need that money. So we, we flew up on the, fr on the Thursday, and he had negotiations on the Friday, mm -hmm. signed for them on the Friday, and then yeah. the rest was history. Yeah, I remember him at Aberdeen with some character up there. Um, your time, when, when you finally left Hull City, was that, you maybe sort of relieved to be away from it all? Yes. Uh, and again, it was a strange, strange way that I left because David Lloyd had just taken over as chairman, the ex-tennis player, yeah. and he actually sacked me without even seeing me face to face. He used another guy, his sidekick, mm -hmm. to give me the uh, the bad news. Mm -hmm. But they actually sacked me on the Saturday before pre-season was due to start on the Monday. But technically they, they couldn't because they hadn't bought the club by then. They were still in talks with buying the club. Mm. So my chairman said, you can't go. He said, you've got to go into training on Monday and take training. Otherwise they'll do you for breach of contract because I, I think I had two years of my contract to run. And I went in on the Monday with my assistant because they'd, they'd sat Jeff as well. And Martin said, I'll let you know, Martin Fish, the chairman, he says, I'll let you know when the deal's been done. He says, but until then, you've got to keep going in to track training. So we're going on the Monday morning, and I'd had this meeting on the Saturday. They'd taken a picture of me going into my office, and then it was on the front page of the local paper, Terry Dolan going into his office for the last time as Old City Manager. So it's all over the paper, so all the players know. Mm. So when I turn up then on the Monday morning to take training, they're all saying, <laughs> what's going on here? <laughs> I said, well, I haven't been sacked yet because they, 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 yeah. you know, they haven't bought the club yet. So that happened on the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. It was the following Friday before the deal was actually done. So I had to take training for four days. And no, of course, on first day of pre-season training, there's the photographers there and all the players there. And all so so me, and, me and my assistant, Jeff, we've got our arms around the players with smiles on our faces thinking, what are we doing here? <laughs> that's quite, that's <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> so you, so you, leave, you leave there, uh, the, um, you had two other managed GDO stints at York City and, and Geisley. Yeah, well, I left, I left Hull... Um, In, well, it was obviously July because it was pre-season, mm -hmm. but I ended up going to Huddersfield as yeah, coach yeah. when Peter Jackson was manager, because Peter had been a player for me at Bradford, mm -hmm. and he had Terry Arroth with him as assistant, so I went there as reserve team coach, and I just wanted to get back into yeah. the game, and I had three years there because I had two with Peter and Terry, and then when Peter left, Steve Bruce came, yeah. so I had a year with Steve. And then I got the opportunity to manage York uh, and jump to it. Mm. 
and I had three, three years at York. It was uh, again a club that was sort of struck with financial problems, didn't it? Yes, I mean to be honest, it was always it had always been a very well run club, mm. um, but they they'd sort of fluctuated between the third division and the fourth division as it was then, and they'd had a go the previous season to to try and get back up and it didn't work out and Alan Little was the manager so he, he left and they asked me to take over and again the first season we did reasonably well but then they they sold the ground to Persimmon and they were going to build a new ground and funnily enough well I left in 2003 so 15, still talking about 15 that. years later you know, yeah. I think they're going to move in next next season. Yeah, and um, yeah, it's been quite a remarkable fall from grace, pretty much like Huddersfield, and pretty much just yeah. keep dropping divisions, don't they? Yeah. Um, Geisley, you remember much? Of yeah, Geisley? I had a year at Geisley. Uh, that was why I was working for the League Managers Association mm. because when I left York, I ended up working for the League Managers Association. Uh, and Geisley asked me to go there, and I had a year there did reasonably well but they decided they wanted somebody else as manager and since then it's been well until I got involved with Bradford Park Avenue it, yeah. it was working for the LMA and working for the Premier League assassin referees yeah. <laughs> so the LMA is that something you enjoy sort of helping out I did, I did, I, yeah I did do in, the, in the, at that time um, I had yeah, well, 2000 and th- 2004, because I had a year at York where I was on gardening leave. Oh, the famous gardening leave. Yeah. Uh, I got my golf handicap <laughs> quite a bit while I was doing that. <laughs> but then worked for the, the following year, started working for the LMA, and my main role there was to pass on my experience to the younger managers, well, particularly those who were getting the, the job for the first time, just to you know, give them as much advice as possible. Yeah, certainly. Uh, so yeah, and then when the opportunity came to get back involved at Park Avenue, I jumped into it. So Park Avenue at the moment, what, I see that you're hoping to get back into the football league. Well, by is it twenty twenty? Is that the, it, the well? That, that's ideal that's dream? that's the dream. That's the ideal dream. Um, because if we could do that, that would be exactly fifty years yeah. from when we went out of the league. It's going to be. It's not going to be easy, but we've we've. We think we're turning things around now. We need we need to develop the ground. That's the mm. the key to it at the moment. Um, but it means two promotions in the next three years, basically. Mm. So mm. you you know you, you, you've but, always got to have a dream. Yeah, right? exactly. So Horsfall Stadium. Do you plan? So is there plans yet to redevelop that? Yeah, <coughs> we're we're in discussions with the council, obviously, with to get a longer lease so that we can do the things that we mm. want with it. So they're just taking a little bit longer than we thought, mm-hmm. but you know we we need a we need a better ground to attract more people, yeah. um, and then we need a bit of luck on the field as well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and finally, we'll just finish off it with Bradford City, of course, the team you supported. But how do you think they'll get on this this year? Well, I've tipped them to go up this time. Uh, <laughs> they had a little bit of a blip on Tuesday night, didn't they? Which was a bit of a shock. But uh, as I say, I haven't seen them yet. In, in the flesh this season but I think they'll go a bit one better than they did last season I, I, I hope they do anyway um, Stuart knows what he's doing he's got Greg with him Greg Abbott yeah. who you know, I had at um, Hull and I had at Bradford City and he, you know, he's part of the team that missed out on promotion so they're good lads they deserve it and I think they're, they're going about it in the right way the people you know the owner, the chairman, James Mason, the chief exec, they're, they're all good people and you know, we just want to see them do well. Yeah, and finally Huddersfield, you know, their former club, I mean it's Yeah, remarkable well, it's, it's, it's just great to see them back where they are now. Um, I mean, I, I was, as I say, I was there for that first game against Newcastle and the atmosphere was absolutely fantastic. Mm-hmm. And I think they're going about it in the right way as well. Um, I know obviously they're getting a lot more money than they were used to, but I don't think they're going to waste it. Yeah. Uh, they've had a decent start, and long may it continue.
Yeah, certainly. We hope that is the case. Terry Dolan, that'll do us there. Thanks okay. very much. You're welcome. Top man.